On August the 16th, Scotland is due to become the first country in the UK to introduce a 20p deposit return scheme to recycle single-use drink bottles and cans. Zero Waste Scotland has designed the initiative and made a video to explain how it will work. When you buy a drink, you'll pay 20p deposit. Plastic bottles, glass bottles and metal cans are included. Once empty, take your drink container back to any shop or takeaway restaurant. You can hand containers back in different ways. Over the counter, through a machine or via an online retailer. When you return your container, you'll get your deposit back. At first glance, the scheme may seem straightforward, but many businesses believe it's just too complicated and costly. With drinks producers having to sign up at the end of this month, Westminster's Scottish Secretary Alistair Jack has called on the Holyrood government to pause the policy while a UK-wide system is developed. He believes that would maximise environmental benefits and avoid cross-border trade barriers. The minister in charge of the policy in Scotland is the co-leader of the Greens, Lorna Slater. She spoke to us from Edinburgh. Lorna Slater, no one uh, disputing really the environmental benefits of this scheme, but so many have issues with the implementation. Why are you pushing ahead with this being introduced in August? Scotland's deposit return scheme will start in August this year. You're absolutely right. The environmental benefits of it are unquestioned in terms of tackling litter in our streets and our parks and our canals and you know, helping us get towards net zero by reducing our carbon footprint. Parliament passed the laws for the deposit return scheme back in 2020. And since then, we've been working with industry toward this year's launch date. We've already given industry an extra year we postponed the launch date, you know, in the in the wake of COVID to help industry get ready. And now we're just systematically working through the issues towards our launch date. We've already reduced costs for producers and retailers. We've you know, we've resolved the issues around VAT with the UK government. And we're working on those last few details that we need to have to have a successful launch in August this year. If it's not implemented in the rest of the UK, uh, and it wouldn't be until 2025, what problems are going to be created, first of all, with cross-border trade, for example? Scotland's deposit return scheme is an ambitious step to protect our environment and protection of our environment in Scotland is a fully devolved matter. It is right that as the Scottish Government and the Scottish Parliament has passed these regulations that we take them forward. Meeting net zero isn't an option. This is something we have to do. And while I am delighted that the rest of the UK is going to be coming along with their deposit return schemes, I'm disappointed by their lack of ambition and by their slow timetable. Okay, but of but course, we're working closely with them to make sure those schemes will be fully interoper interoperable. Uh, well, in the meantime, those Scottish companies, will they have to repackage? Will they have to reprice for any cross-border sales? Will uh, companies in England and Wales have to do the same for sending stuff to Scotland, have to repackage, reprice? That's all got a cost to it. The deposit return scheme is a producer responsibility scheme. That's the whole point, that instead of our local authorities, the taxpayer having to pick up the tab for collecting these materials, cleaning them, sorting and recycling them, as is correct in a producer responsibility scheme, the producers of these materials will be responsible for collecting them. Deposit return schemes are successfully implemented all over the world where they do exactly what they say on the tin. They reduce litter, they reduce waste and they improve okay. recycling. But you've, you, you've acknowledged there's going to be extra costs for producers, significant costs. There will be costs for producers. That's the point of an extended producer responsibility scheme, so that it's not taxpayers, not our really stretched local authorities who will be picking up the tab for collecting these materials and sorting them. They sit with producers in Scotland. We will be working very closely, and we have been working closely with industry. Already, we've reduced costs for producers. We've increased the fees to retailers to help them with the handling of these. We've simplified the processes for businesses to get involved in the scheme. But these, We're working really closely with industry to make sure we can have a successful But producers launch. have got extra costs themselves already with various... All, all that we've heard about cost of living, cost of doing business, they've already got a heavy costs. A lot of smaller businesses are telling us they'll just not be able to cope with this. I'm fully aware of the particular concerns around small producers, and that's why I met with them urgently on Friday to hear their remaining concerns. As I've said, we're systematically working through the concerns that industry have. 
have met with small producers on Friday, and we are actively looking at solutions to the problems that they've raised with me. OK, so you're saying that solutions to problems. Am I right in saying that uh, businesses uh, are to be expected to sign up for the scheme by the end of this month? Um, if that's correct, then how can they sign up for something that still isn't fully in place yet? They still don't fully know what they're signing up for. The Scotland's deposit return scheme is to be delivered by industry. It's an industry scheme. So the details of how that is to be implemented are deliberately for industry to decide. Many businesses of Scotland have made significant investments and are putting in place the processes to participate in the scheme. OK, so how many reverse vending machines will be required for that to be fully implemented in August? There, there will be reverse vending machines all over the country. For those larger return points where they have many thousands of bottles and cans back, a reverse vending machine is the most economically viable model. For other businesses, there are other models. They can be a manual return point where they don't require a reverse, a reverse vending machine, or some businesses may have a valid reason to be excluded from being a return point. For example, if there are health and safety concerns or if they simply lack the space to store the materials. How many, but how many of these machines are in place? OK, maybe you don't know the precise figure, but percentage-wise, how many of these machines are in place, these reverse vending machines? Scotland's deposit return scheme is an industry-led scheme, so implementing it is for industry. Now, I know of businesses that have ordered their reverse vending machines, that have applied for the planning permissions that they need to install them, have made the modifications to their businesses, and I congratulate and thank okay, those that, businesses businesses, who made but, that investment. But a lot, of, a lot of companies, a lot of companies haven't made that investment. A lot of companies say they can't afford to make that investment. How many of these machines are going to be in place for the start in August? Not all return points need to be implemented via a reverse spending machine. There are many ways that businesses can participate in the scheme, both large businesses and small businesses. And I, I urgently suggest that if your business is not yet ready, contact SEPA and Circularity Scotland and find out what you need to do to get ready for our August launch. What about the consumers? How do they get the payment for returning their cans and bottles? That's an excellent question. So deposit return schemes work really well around the world, and some people may even remember such schemes fondly from their childhood. When you buy your bottle of can of juice or wine, whatever, whatever you're drinking, you will pay an extra 20 pence on that bottle or can, and then when you return it, you'll get that 20 pence back. So many, for example, uh, grocery stores, supermarkets, will operate the big reverse vending machines. Smaller venues may have a manual point where you'll hand your bottle or can back to the person at the staff and they will give you the 20 pence specifically so or a cash? voucher for their staff. Is it cash or voucher? It's not something that's going to be transferred onto a card. A lot of people don't use cash anymore. That's correct. So there's, there's different ways that the schemes can be implemented. Our scheme is an industry-led scheme, so the specific details of that will be up to the specific stores. But in other countries, for example, the reverse vending machines, and this is probably the most common model, will give you a voucher for the store. And where you have a parade of shops who have worked together to install a common RVM, when you return your bottles and cans, you might choose which, which shop your voucher is for, so then you can go and spend that money in the shop. And I know in particular small stores are very keen to participate in this scheme because it looks like it can increase footfall into their shop as people come in to collect their 20p's or to spend their money. You've made the point that it's already been delayed. The introduction has already been delayed twice. Uh, there may well be legal challenges if it doesn't meet with the UK standards uh, by, by time of August. Uh, your SNP uh, colleague, Fergus Ewing of the SNP, says this is reckless. This isn't going to happen in August, is it? This scheme is definitely going to be launching in August. All those businesses who have made that investment, who bought those RVM machines and who are getting ready, uh, you know, they are going to make it work. It is an industry scheme. It's going to launch on the on that 16th of August, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this happening. And that date in August is an absolute commitment from you. Absolutely. Lorna Slater, thanks for joining us in Scotland tonight.